In this video, we'll be talking about the reciprocal of a quadratic function, which is really nice because in the previous lesson, we studied the reciprocal of a linear function. And I'm actually going to show you another way to graph a rational function, um, but these really only apply to reciprocals. So in the previous lesson, you could have used this technique, but I think I ran out of time. So um, what we're going to talk about for the next two minutes applies for um, reciprocal of linear functions as well. So what you do is you look at the original function, okay? So before you take the reciprocal, whether it's linear, cubic, quadratic, doesn't matter, okay? So since I'm taking the reciprocal, uh, reciprocal of a quadratic function in this lesson, um, that's why I have the of quadratic here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the reciprocal. So before I take the reciprocal, uh, I want you to remember, so reciprocal of a large value, a value of large magnitude, let's say, I don't know, 100, if you take the reciprocal, it becomes 1 over 100. So a big value becomes a small value. And a small value, like, I don't know, if you think of a number like 0 0.0001, if you take the reciprocal of that, it becomes a very um, large value, a value with large magnitude. And a reciprocal positive number stays positive, and reciprocal negative uh, stays negative. And lastly, reciprocal of zero is undefined. Okay, so you put all of that together, uh, and I usually tell students in summary: big could become small, so it becomes big. Positive stays positive, negative stays negative, and zero becomes undefined. So if you put all that together, this is how the reciprocal of a quadratic looks like. So always sketch in my asymptote. All right. Now, when you take the reciprocal of a quadratic, you'll realize you, once again, just like in the previous lesson with typical linear functions, you'll always have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Okay. All right. And another thing I forgot to mention is that reciprocal of 1 and negative 1 remain as 1 and negative 1 respectively. So, because if you take reciprocal 1, you still have 1. So, these are our invariant points. Okay, so big becomes small. And small becomes big. Okay, so that's how I get this branch. Big becomes small, small becomes big. And same thing here. Bam, bam. Okay, now let's focus on this middle branch here. Because the features of the parabola will affect the features for the reciprocal of a quadratic function. This value here, okay, if you just focus on the parabola from negative 4 to 2, this number here... This point, this is a negative, negative one, negative 10. Okay, that's the vertex, negative one, negative 10. If I take the reciprocal, okay, this point is now, instead of a minimum point, it'll be the maximum point. Okay, let me plot it first and I'll explain why it's the maximum. Because it goes from the biggest negative number Okay, if you take the reciprocal of all these numbers here, it goes from the biggest negative number, but when you take the reciprocal, it becomes the smallest negative number. And the smallest negative number actually makes it the maximum point, the local maximum here. Okay, this is tricky here. Oh. Ooh, okay, that wasn't very pretty, but all right, well, I'll do. So that's why the vertex of your quadratic function is a very important point because it will help us find the local maximum point um, if your original parabola is opening up. But if you can imagine, if your original parabola is opening down, you're going to find uh, a local minimum point. Oh, it's not very pretty. You know what, it'll do. It will do.
All right, so there we go. So using your understanding of the reciprocal of a number, you can graph the reciprocal of a quadratic function. So this is a little different from our strategy in the previous uh, lesson. In the previous lesson we did, uh, we found the asymptotes, we found the intercepts, bam, 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 connect the dots, fill in the graph, okay? Uh, so this one, like I said, uh, if you understand the reciprocal of number where big becomes small, small becomes big, positive stays positive, negative stays negative, uh, and reciprocal zero becomes undefined, then um, you'll be able to graph these uh, pretty quickly. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that when you graph the reciprocal, reciprocal of a quadratic function, it's a little more complicated than reciprocal of a linear function because you have different scenarios that might take place. So you have this... Uh, I would argue this this scenario is the one that gives you two vertical asymptotes because this is a quadratic function with two real rows, okay? Which means it has two x-intercepts. But you can have a quadratic function with one x-intercept, okay? So if you do that, okay, let me get my invariant points here. Bam, bam. Ooh. Beautiful. Positive stays positive, and um, big becomes small, small becomes big. Leave all the asymptote, bam, x equals 5. Okay, here, now all, this is the third possible scenario when you graph, or you, when you work with the reciprocal quadratic function. Okay, it's going to be one of these three graphs. And basically, you can determine that by asking yourself how many real zeros are there for that um, uh, quadratic function. So this one, all the values are negative. So guess what? When I take the reciprocal, all of them will still be negative. Now this is the largest negative value. Okay. Sorry. 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 It's the smallest negative value. But when I take the reciprocal, it will become the largest negative value, okay? So this is 3, negative 2, okay? So when I take the reciprocal, it'll be 3, 1 half. Oh, this is weird. Okay, so this is 3, 2. Let me write it out for you if you want. But if you take the reciprocal, 2 becomes a half. Now, 3 is unchanged. All right, so now... Remember, I said this used to be the smallest negative number, but now it becomes the largest negative number because I'm taking the reciprocal. So if that's the case, all these other values, make it approach. Oh, this is not pretty at all because it has to look symmetrical, right? Well, you should try to make it look symmetrical. Okay, Ooh. it will do for now. I'll have a prettier version of it later. But you know what? Just to blow it up. Oh, by the way, this one has no vertical asymptote because this quadratic function has no real zero. So it has no x-intercepts for the graph. Uh, so that's why you see no vertical asymptotes. So just because you have a rational function, it doesn't mean you have to have a vertical asymptote. I forgot to draw in the horizontal asymptotes for both of these. Whoops. Okay. Now, it doesn't have a vertical asymptote, but it does have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, and for this scenario, I just want to blow it up. So, I'll ref you know, I won't reflect it. You, you can do the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, but I just want to blow it up how it looks. So, when I take, when I see this, I think of I think of it as like a hill. Uh, you can think of it, it looks like a hat if you, you use your imagination. Uh, if you've, I always make this joke, but students, uh, they haven't read the book. So it's in Le Petit Prince. Uh, it's about a, uh, a snake swallowing an elephant. But that's, that's what I think of every time I see this graph. Anyways, um, let's practice, let's graph. Okay, so, 
When I see f of x, I know that this is going to be the scenario where I have two vertical asymptotes. Okay, so in my mind, I'm picturing, I'm picturing something that looks like this. Okay, something that looks like this. So in fact, it it's going to look very similar to that because I'm looking at the quadratic function. Okay, like when I see this, I'm also thinking of. this okay i'm also thinking of my quadratic function that relates to this uh, reciprocal okay so because i know this and i know i'm taking so I, I have the the graph of this rational function in my head but i still need to fill in this table so x intercept there are none okay you can let f of x equal zero and try to solve for x and you'll get no solution y intercept let x equal zero so this is going to be two negative two fifths vertical asymptote you have two of them x equals negative one x equals five. Ooh, as x approaches negative one from the right f of x approaches as x approaches negative one from the left f of x approaches so there are two vertical asymptotes so i gotta do this two times as x approaches 5 from the right, f of x approaches. As x approaches 5 from the left, f of x approaches. Okay, you know what? Just like last time, I'm actually going to do the graph first. Can I fill in this cell? Absolutely, I can. Okay, without the graph, I can I can do this. So for example, as I approach negative 1 from the, the right, I can see that this factor will be positive and this factor will be negative. So I can tell you uh, this, the denominator will be negative, which means um, it's gonna be negative infinity. So I can, I can do it, but you know what? Like I said, because I have to do the graph anyways, it's easier for me just to do the graph and then come back to fill in the cell. Okay. Uh, how about n behavior as x approaches infinity f of x approaches as x approaches negative infinity f of x approaches so now i'm going to the left the far left and the far right and ask myself what happens i know it's going to approach zero how do i know because if you look at the equation the denominator is a quadratic okay it is going to get so much larger than two as x becomes uh, a larger and larger in magnitude so whether x becomes a large positive number or a large negative number this will approach zero okay now we don't know if it's zero from above or zero from below so i will fill it in once i do the graph so since this is approaching zero then the horizontal asymptote must be y equals zero all right uh, i'll fill everything else i'll come back to it once i do the graph okay uh, you know, what? I'm going to come back to 1B. I'm, I'm really excited about the graph, so I'm going to just I'm going to do the graph. So uh, I'll do one. So that means negative one is here, and five is here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, y equals zero. What's the y-intercept? Negative two fifths. Okay, negative 0.4, so we're looking at about here, okay? All right, so no x-intercepts, which means I have to approach negative infinity. And on the other side, because the factor was raised to power 1, that means the behavior on the other side must be positive infinity. Bam. So I know it has to reach some, some max point here, okay? Now, I also know because of the symmetry of the original parabola, then that will create some symmetry in the reciprocal of the, the quadratic function. So I know based on the symmetry of the parabola, we average the zeros, uh, and that will allow me to find the location of the vertex. So negative one plus five is four, four divided by two is two. So I know that there's gonna be a local max right here, okay? when x equals two. So that's why, that's how I do this calculation for one B. 
So the x coordinate of the, the local maximum point occurs halfway between the two vertical asymptotes because before they turn, they were vertical asymptotes, they were x-intercepts. So this this logic that you have from grade 10 where you, where you find the average of the zeros based on the symmetry of the parabola, this, this symmetry, this idea of symmetry still exists. So anyways, this is going to be 2, which means I need to find f of 2 to find the coordinates of this local max point. And if you do the math, it's negative 2 over 9. So therefore, local max point is 2, negative 2 over 9. All right, so. Trying to make it draw, trying to make it look symmetrical. Ooh. All right, and then other side, positive infinity. Behavior must be opposite. So if this is negative infinity, this must be positive infinity because the factor is raised to the power of 1. In the next example, you'll see that the behavior is the same because the factor is being squared. All right, I have the beautiful graph. Uh, sometimes uh, they ask me to label the local max point. They didn't do ask us in this case, so um, I didn't do that. All right, so I have the graph. I'm going to fill in the table. So if I approach negative 1 from the right side, negative infinity. Hey, that's why I said earlier. And you know what? Like I said, having if I'm going to be asked to find the graph anyways, then I might as well just start with the graph and come back. Uh, and then I have a picture to help me answer all these questions. So if it's negative infinity here, on the other side must be positive infinity. Uh, 5 to the right must be positive infinity. 5 to the left must be negative infinity. Does it match with the graph? Let's see. Yes, perfect. Okay, domain, there are two restrictions. X cannot be negative 1, X cannot be 5. Range, okay, so the textbook actually gets the range wrong. So um, take a look at the graph. Um, the first and third branch tells you that X, oh, sorry, Y is greater than zero. But the third branch the third branch tells you that y has to be less than or equal to this uh, local max point. So y is less than or equal to negative 2 over 9. Beautiful. All right. Uh, where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? So on the first branch, if you look at the graph, increase, 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 increase. Left to right, it's going up. And now the middle branch is a tricky one. It goes increase, 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 stop. Decrease, 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 decrease. And the third branch is easy. It's just decrease, 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 decrease. So we put all that together. It's increasing on the first branch. So negative infinity to negative 1. And for the second branch, you basically increase and then you stop midway. So that midway point, remember, was two. We averaged the vertical asymptotes, the yeah, those those values to give us the, the midway point. And then two to five, you're decreasing, and five onwards, you are decreasing as well. Okay, beautiful. Let's do it again. This one. So once again, I'm thinking of that quadratic function, okay? So x-intercept, none, y-intercept is 1 quarter, vertical asymptote, x equals negative 2. So as x approaches negative 2 from the right, what happens to the function? As x approaches negative 2 from the left, what happens? End behavior, well, I know the horizontal asymptotes y equals 0. We're going to study rational functions where it's not y equals 0. So I know it's a little boring right now. Everything's y equals 0, y equals 0, y equals 0. But trust me, it's, it's not going to be y equals 0 every single time. Uh, end behavior, because it's y equals 0, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches 0. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches 0. And I just realized I forgot to say above or below from the for the previous example, so I'll just quickly do that. 
So from the previous example, you'll see that it's above and above. I just stared at the graph, right? Above, above. Okay, sorry about that. I will try not to forget this time. I will do everything else for this table once I have the graph. So x equals negative 2, so I'm going to do a scale of 1 here. And this is my horse asymptote. And uh, y, uh, let's see, 1 quarter. No, I'm going to do a 1 quarter here. x equals negative 2. Okay, now because there are no x-intercepts, it has to shoot up. I cannot go down. I have to shoot up, bam. And now on the other side, because the exponent applied onto this factor is 2, it's even numbers. So the behavior as I go to the other side will, will be the same as the behavior on this side. So I stop for a second because I want it. I need the symmetry here. Remember, if there's symmetry in the parabola, there must be symmetry in, in this function as well. Because where am I getting these values from? I'm getting these values from the the quadratic function. Oh, that is not pretty, but it is what it is. All right, I'll try again later. I have one more chance of redemption after. Okay, hopefully yours looks much prettier than mine. Oh, that is. You know what? One more try. Okay, let me plot this point this time first. Uh, oh, this is just not pretty. Yeah, I'd take off half a mark if I was marking if I saw that. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that one. Okay, and then the previous one, I forgot the label too. Since it's one fu one function I'm graphing, I can live without a label. But if I was graphing two functions on the same plane, then a label would definitely be helpful. All right, so guess what? This is the correct graph. Oh, I can uh, fill in everything else now. Pause infinity, pause infinity. I'm just staring at the graph. Left and right side of the a vertical asymptote, pause infinity. End behavior approaching zero from above, zero from above. Domain, there's one restriction, can't be two. Sorry, negative two for x. Uh, range, y is greater than zero. Uh, intervals of increase. If you look at the graph, uh, the first branch is increasing. And the second branch is decreasing. Uh, where is it positive? It is basically positive everywhere except for negative 2 because it's undefined at negative 2. When is it negative? Never. And that makes sense because if you look at the original quadratic function, that function was never negative. So that's why the reciprocal of the quadratic function should also never be negative. Okay? Always think back to something you're very good at. So in this case, it's the quadratic function. All right. Speaking of things you're good at, quadratic function. So, uh, x squared plus 4. So I'm thinking of x squared plus 4 in my head. You know what, this time I'm even going to give you x squared plus 4. Okay. So this is in my head when I'm, when I'm doing the math over here. So x intercept, none. Y intercept is 1 quarter. Vertical asymptote, ooh, none. Oh, beautiful. If there are no vertical asymptotes, guess what? <laughs> you can't talk about behavior near vertical asymptotes. Okay, end behavior. Uh, for that one, I can talk about. <laughs> As x approaches infinity, you know what? I'm going to do a shortcut. As the magnitude of x approaches infinity. So this, this will work both ways. I, I can make this shortcut because I know that the behavior as I go both ways is going to be the same. So this basically means as I go to the left or the right. Because I know 
that because this is my graph, this is the quadratic function I'm working with, I know that as um, I'm working with the reciprocal of that function, uh, and when x becomes large, whether large positive or large negative, f of x will approach zero from above. Because this function is always positive. Of course it's gonna be approaching from above. All right, so uh, that that will come, okay? So if you didn't see that shortcut, it's okay. I, it's just, I've seen these functions quite a few times, so that's how I, I know that the shortcut exists. Okay, and then they say find the coordinates of a global maximum. So the coordinates of global maximum occur where the vertex is. Remember where the smallest, like the lowest, at the smallest value becomes the largest value when they take the reciprocal. So this um, is actually pretty easy to work with because the vertex of this quadratic function is on the y axis, which means the global maximum will be on the y axis. Okay. It's supposed to look like that hill situation. That's not very pretty. Anyways. Find the coordinates of global maximum. So vertex of quadratic function is 0, 4. So because that is the case, therefore, global max point. Remember, these are the, the hill scenario, right? So it's either going to be a global max or a global min. So global max point is. 0, 1 quarter. Beautiful. So 0, 1 quarter. This time I'm going to try to make my life easy. Make a quarter there. Make my hill. Try to make it symmetrical. It's a little lopsided, but I'll live with it. There we go. Beautiful. This one, like I said, is a little easy because the vertex was located on the y-axis. So you might be wondering, well, what if it was like a little harder? If it was like, I don't know, like x squared plus x plus 4. If it's x plus x plus 4, you will still have a parabola with no x-intercepts. Uh, you just have to locate the vertex. So there are lots of ways to find the vertex, like you can complete the square, you could do the shortcut, the negative v over 2a, uh, but you have to do some extra work here. So this one's easy because I didn't have to do extra work to find the vertex, but that's not to say that that will never happen. Okay, uh, let's do, I believe in the homework you have to find the vertex. Okay, so let's finish off everything. I, I'm gonna write the domain, all real numbers, range, uh, it's between zero to one quarter, including one quarter though. Between zero and a quarter, including a quarter. Increase, it's on the left side of the hill, you're increasing, and you're decreasing on the right side of the hill. Uh, where's a positive? All real numbers. Where's a negative? Never. Okay, so basically I covered each of the three scenarios when you work with the reciprocal of a quadratic function. Um, Doing the, the two homework sheets will we'll once again cover all three scenarios and give you extra practice.